Thank you everyone, thank you for giving the opportunity. We enjoy a great diversity in our group. We are seven people from seven continents and we are a family today. So thank you AFP for giving that opportunity and thank you for everyone for being great friends here. Uh, my living group chose uh, me to present this. I take that responsibility. Uh, the project uh, I took up is have a, have, a, uh, have a social relevance as well. We all know that how the cities world over have grown. There's always uh, how the cities grow is very simple. It's like concentric circle. In the, in the core of the concentric circle are these business districts. Anywhere you look at, whether it's Manhattan or London or San Francisco and all that. And what COVID has done is try to disrupt the fundamentals of how the cities, you know, have kind of emerged over the years. Therefore, it is important to understand these trends. I work for a real estate company and take the commercial real estate, so it was important for me uh, also to, to look at it. But from a capital markets perspective, the reach globally is about $12 trillion. So, and a lot of insurance money is invested into it, so it has a large uh, social impact as well as to how these trends emerge. Uh, in November last year, when I visited U.S., someone, I wanted to go to San Francisco and someone said, if you're visiting, uh, just be careful, it may look like a ghost town. And I did visit it, and I actually found it actually was, the city was main city center, was only about 5% occupied, and you don't feel safe while walking in the evening. It just made me think that this is how the world is changing. Fortunately, in the same visit, when I visited New York, it was different. I mean, it was still 40 to 50 percent occupied. It gave us thought that it's not a different size, but it's not possibly different, but different, but different cities, different uh, industries. And that made me give me some thought. What AMP gave is to put some of the voting thoughts in a certain perspective. Uh, but before I do that, uh, let me ask you as a group how many of you feel that the world of office, or how the office is, is used will change in you know, a post COVID world. Right, that's, that's two says 120%. So, <laughs> background, we'll move ahead. Uh, how it is relevant, and I took uh, you know, uh, my presentation slide. Mike has taught us one of the things that, as, as CEOs, one of the tools which we have as management uh, is, is, is to, you know, when we deliver the strategic execution, there's organization structure and also the physical space. Now all of you here have experienced two things which is relevant to the workplace strategy. In this course, you've experienced the virtual combined with <coughs> the physical, and by and large we are relatively clear what value creation virtual did and how it So we actually experienced hybrid. The second thing we actually experienced is the flexi works desk. In the last Five weeks of sitting with different people. So, now we enjoy the flexi work desk as a workplace strategy as well. And we know the value creation model here in terms of making more ability to make more people. That's, all, that's why this understanding the workplace is important as, as CEOs. These are the four trends which are emerging, uh, which we all need to look at it and how, uh, and it's still a work in progress. Uh, so, we all need to see how it kind of shapes up. So, hybrid style of working is, is given. It's no more, you don't need to do a research. <coughs> Kind of accepted globally that that's going to be a way forward. Technology has made an impact. Uh, how the offices will change, it's already started appearing that you know, if you work from anywhere, work from virtual, so inside the office, how the workplace strategies will change, how the interiors will change, all this will have an impact. We'll have more Zoom rooms in the same offices that you were going through. Um, you know, and then the, there's the ESG element which is coming in and the technology and experience which is coming in. There's the concepts in the in the in the now called the next zero. Next zero is nothing but a test of an office building. Very simple. It has a huge opportunity of value creation. Uh, you know, the moment the, the building becomes almost like a creating no impact on the on the environment. And all these will lead to the change in the leasing and portfolio strategies and will have an impact on whether the capital will move from the leads to flexi works or maybe the works of the world will emerge. And these are some of the dynamics which are there. I made an attempt to, uh, to, to uh, send a survey and thank you for some of you who responded to the survey. And, and good news is that the AFP survey confirms uh, that, you know, I will line with some of the top five mega trends. Uh, these trends are very simple, but what the change is the visit to office will not be a way of life. It will be a purpose driven. So it will not be, you know, you will think that I have to go three days a week. What are my meetings? I'm going to have those meetings in those office. You will plan a bit as if you're planning a, a visit in another city and you plan, you know, your calendar accordingly. What's changing on the user side is the business is moving from a B2B to a B2C. So that's how you to do a business with an IBM or a 
or I sent you an email, I have to manage the B2B relationship, but at the same time, I have to ensure that every employee <coughs> becomes a customer. You know, therefore, the feedback service, you know, yeah. <coughs> technology is making another disruption in its own way. Postar, which is the largest uh, uh, real estate tech firm, is valued at over $40 billion. Uh, we've seen Zillow and other companies, what they're doing in the, in the real estate world. So there's a lot of money and capital coming in into, into the real estate tech world. And what's going to happen is, is an extension of how you go to office. So you would expect, if a Google gets you to office, you would expect the same app to book your seat as well. And that's what I'm calling it as an organization of uh, of workspace, we were understood this we were far ahead of time. That's a different issue that they've got carried away to the valuation game and the collection. These are the trends. So what is it? What is it that I'm recommending to my company is that keep the customer in the center because it's going to emerge. So I'm going to recommend a strategy to the company to have a customer-centric organization offering the world-class ecosystem for future of work. And future of work is going to emerge consistently what we have today, I think next three or four years it will take to settle. Uh, what's also important is we see the how uh, the technology uh, is here and we are the first one to experience that. So the strategy uh, I'm recommending is to complement and compete. You have to take the, 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 the virtual world as competition as well because otherwise someday it can take over the physical world. Uh, how, what are challenges, you know, other strategies are having designed for new age buildings uh, which describe the ability to connect, collaborate and belong. And, and how do you take the other factors which are important along, which is the well-being, uh, safety, sustainability, and user experience as the drivers. And the last uh, is the organization, which I call it as a build to test. So these are the strategies uh, which are evolving, which I'm going to recommend to my company. I try to put in a context of understanding what we're, I put in a context here like a, a large company, but we're kind of largely engineering driven company. Our, our mindset to adapt for technology is somewhat uh, less. So that I've identified as a performance gap, which is currently we're not able to use the data which we have the opportunity uh, as, as uh, we can, you know. So that's kind of what's gap in the performance gap. On the opportunity side, the two emerging areas which are coming in, one is the whole experience enhancement opportunity which one can do, and then uh, what is the change in the existing buildings and existing assets one will have to do. The second opportunity gap is for coming from the technology side as a lot of innovation happening in technology and how far we can adapt to that as an organization. Uh, this is just a reflection of some of the buildings. So our challenge going forward would be one, to design new buildings which adapt to the new world, and at the same time, uh, you know, we have to re-modify some of the existing buildings. So that's the difference between uh, a car and a building is, you know, if your car is 10 years old, you can dump it and then scrap the building, you can't, because that has a life of 50 years, we have to redo the buildings. Uh, and that's, 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 that's a good strategy. I was working with some of the architects on the prototypes of uh, new age buildings, which will have hybrids. And you'd be surprised that some of the initial concepts are coming in that the offices will start looking like malls. So there's a concept in in, in, uh, in offices or anywhere when you see a retail, it's like people like seeing people. So the more you make immersive environment where the more people can see each other, there's energy creation and that's what will you know, increase the collaboration and, and connecting at the work. These are some of the concepts which we are emerging. So what we might have to do and what's my learning uh, from AMP is I have to do a lot of internal selling, which I will drive it through a lot of strategic insights. Uh, you know, consumer research and other factors, and uh, you know, and and you know, also put in context what's happening in the macro environment changes, and what is equally really, really important is I have to drive a uh, new cultural change into the organization. We have to bring new skills, for example, hiring a head of ESG into the organization, uh, hiring uh, hoteliers, more hospitalization and workplace enhancements. Uh, drive some of the product and services which could include build to desk and other factors which are not there in the organization, enhance uh, some of the workplace strategy and property management uh, uh, operations, and then uh, these are the areas which I intend to present once I go back uh, uh, to the to the to India and you know and take the deal of both buying accordingly. But what I've learned at AFP is. Uh, you know, it's an organized real estate organization. You have multiple domain heads, so you have to get the buy-in from the domain heads, and then work uh, work upwards. And sometimes, when you start from top down, it can fail. So those are some of the learnings on the strategic execution side. Yeah, that's my takeaway on this. Thank you.
That was wonderful, and I see a lot of positive, very enthusiastic comments coming over the uh, the airwaves here. Very clear, crisp articulation. <coughs> Great job, great presentation. And uh, a number of people have pointed out that there are applications um, in terms of what you're discussing that extend far beyond just re real estate or office space. Um, so Paul notes that uh, you know he's thinking about the same trends that are affecting housing and even city design. Paul, where are you? Yeah. Yeah, and you, that vision you had at the end with those pictures, like we're thinking about similar things coming at from the other the other angle, right? And not to mention the ESG benefits potentially. Like cities are designed around this business core with these raging suburbs. Like think about how how you do it differently in this world where you're not necessarily all commuting downtown in a world. So I'd love to share ideas with you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, I can comment on it. This is the first time. The real estate in the last 200 years was always competing with another location or another run. For the first time, real estate is competing with the cloud. So it's a huge disruption. Mm -hmm. And second, uh, trends like uh, Airbnb can, can actually be competing with the office building. So these are like a different landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like the case which uh, our French telecom case of the landline, you know, the landline can compete in a VOIP or you know, complete disruption models uh, which are offering the same solution. <coughs> Thank you, Ahmed.